Dang, no imaging tonight. Look at this weather. Good thing I got all this data though. So winter's definitely arrived here. It's freaking cold already and snowing. <laughs> but you know what? After so long the summer, I'm really glad to get a little bit of change and I'm really lucky to be able to live where we get four seasons. So yeah, I'll just deal with it. Today's video really is Kind of a capturing video, but the difference is that I've already captured the data. Really what I wanted to talk about was comparing the these two images because they're images I've taken before. So a couple weeks ago, uh, right before the moon started to get really bright, uh, I had some great clear skies and I had almost two weeks of clear skies, which after this summer was almost unheard of. And I just kept gathering and gathering data. And I kind of got busy. And I normally, what I would do is I would be kind of searching out for a target. Now I'm going to take this or I'm going to take that. I just didn't, I didn't have time. It's been super busy. Things have been going on. And I, so every clear night, you know, it'd be, oh, tonight's clear again. Well, I don't want to miss out on any imaging time. So I just kept doing the same target over and over. And I figured, well, more you know, who doesn't want a bunch of data on one target, right? I mean, it's great. So what I ended up doing was, is uh, if you saw my last video, uh, I did the, the Rings of Cygnus. And so I already had the Edge HD8 all set up and everything. And I just picked another target. And it happened to be the Cave Nebula. And I've always struggled with the Cave Nebula. I don't know why. Uh, it's just been something I've never been able to take a really good image of until now. And I'm really excited to uh, show you guys my latest cave nebula. I was kind of in awe of it just because of all the struggles that I've had in the past trying to get a good image of it, get a good uh, edit, post-process of it. I I've just always struggled with it. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. And the other object that I took was the Lion Nebula. And I've done this before as well, and it was one of my favorite images. It was one of my first images with the when I first got my dedicated astrophotography camera, the ASI 1600. And my wife actually loves this target as well. She, um, and in a previous video, I think you might have seen where uh, she made me this huge canvas print and of it. And you know, I've I've still got that canvas print. I um, I still have it hanging up in my office area and I just, I love it. It's, it's still one of my favorite images of all time. But I used the Z81 and the 2600 and I got about uh, 25 hours on it, uh, this go around. And it just, it kind of blew my mind how much data I got. Back in the day I was doing five minute subs. And so all of my cave nebula photos and all of the lion head nebula photos or lion nebula, uh, they were all with five minute subs and I don't think that I got quite as many hours on these. So the cave nebula came out to 30 hours and the uh, lion nebula came out to 25 hours. So I thought I'd take a second and show you some of this awesome data. So we're in Pixon site and I just wanted to show you some of the data that I got on the lion's head nebula. This was the hydrogen alpha and when I first started getting this data in, I was very excited because I was picking up a lot more than I did ever before on this. And you could still make out the shape of the lion in this data, uh, but I was getting so much more all around it and, and up outside of the, the main nebulosity too. And so when I was doing these, I was getting pretty excited that um, this data was was just really good. I was getting a lot of the dust and more than I had ever gotten before and especially in the oxygen. This oxygen is just coming out amazing and you can still kind of make out the lion here but not really. And in my original shot of this a few years ago with the ASI 1600, I wasn't getting nearly this much contrast or data. Now let's take a look at some of this cave nebula uh, data. It, the cave nebula here in oxygen came out like normally I really struggled to get this uh, nebula before and I really couldn't pick up a lot of the dust in it 
uh, with my old gear and w I guess with my old processing skills. Uh, my processing skills have come a long way since I took this last. And of course I've got the, a better camera now. Now I took this with the Edge HD8 and you could tell by the big bloated stars. And I kind of fixed that in the final version, but yeah, in the main data you could see it. But this sulfur was just amazing to me. Uh, it really outlines the, the, the cave part of the nebula. And I also got uh, quite a bit more out here, which contrasts with this oxygen uh, quite a bit. What really popped out, of course, was the hydrogen alpha. And together with the oxygen and the sulfur, it just made an amazing image. Uh, and one of my favorites for the cave nebula, which to me had always been a challenge to work with. So before we leave PixInsight real quick, I did want to mention that I used Bill Blanchon's uh, SHO normalization in helping edit this. And lately he's been doing some amazing work, some pixel math work uh, on star reduction, which I also used. And his latest, which is the SHO and HOO normalization, which is amazingly simple to use and it cuts so many steps out of my processing workflow now. And I just wanted to say thanks, Bill. I really appreciate it. Um, also, James Lamb uh, did some really nice work on the SCNR. In normal PixInsight, your SCNR um, doesn't account for removing the brightness uh, when you're reducing the green signal. And uh, James Lamb came up with a way to do that. And then Bill went ahead and grabbed that code and modified it a little bit and added it to his package um, in his download. So thank you both. Uh, I really think that you guys are making uh, huge contributions to the astrophotography community, and we really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. So thank you guys. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to both of their channels. So here's the Cave Nebula uh, that I took sometime in late 2019. I really had a hard time processing this. Uh, th there wasn't a lot of dust around and almost no detail to speak of. And of course, this was done uh, with my Z81 in the 1600 because I didn't have my Edge HD. Here's my image that I took uh, two and a half years ago. Still is one of my favorite images. Um, and I really like the star color that I got out of this, which, which is unusual. Um, you could see some of the artifacts from the 1600 in it if you look closely. You can see some of the artifacts from the cheaper uh, filters, budget filters that I was using. And uh, there's still some of that dust in the background that I kind of just washed away into the, the black of space. So before we get any further, I just want to take a quick break for the channel sponsor. The sponsor of today's video is me. I too small to have a sponsor, but I just wanted to grab everybody's attention real quick and ask that if you're enjoying the video, please hit that like button. And also, if you've been watching a few videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It'll really help me out. Uh, it just makes me feel good. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when new videos come out and you know, you'll just make an old man really happy. So uh, let's get back to the video. And I think that we all start with these images, these first images that we get, and we think, you know, these are amazing at the time. And then as you go on and you grow and you learn in the hobby, you just start to get a, a better sense and a better feel of, of what you're pulling out of the dust in, in the night sky. So tell me what you think about the differences in the last three years between uh, my older images and my newer images. I'd love to hear in the comments below, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on the process. And if you see the same thing in your own work, yeah, I would love to hear about that as well. Well, I hope you liked the video. I'm gonna leave you with my two images and uh, this scene behind me of the wonderful clouds and the snow rolling in. Uh, I guess I won't be imaging tonight, but I'll be enjoying the nice cold weather.